the police minister, Senator Mkunu, has told Business Day newspaper in an interview that there needs to be greater collaboration between the police and private security firms. That needs to happen if South Africa's rapidly evolving crime situation is to be properly confronted. He says that he has already met with the umbrella body, the Private Security Industry Regulatory Authority, and intends to engage big players in the sector soon, in his words, to get things moving. Uh, Criminologist Dr. Guy Lamb joins us now. Guy, good afternoon. There's a kind of, uh, really, do do we need the private sector to do what our taxes are supposedly paying for the police to do, official law enforcement? And then there's another part of me that goes... If the private sector corporation is going to help reduce levels of crime, then by all means go for it. So I suppose they're, they're two broad issues. Is it a, a, a decent idea in principle? And if it is, then is it like to, likely to work in practice? So it's not a simple answer to, to your question. I think um, the police have been working with the private sector on an ad hoc basis for, for many, many years. If we kind of think business against crime, um, a lot of kind of CBD type of work where you have kind of business coming together using, you know, uh, CCTV type of footage, you know, using, you know, putting money into private security in terms of visible policing. So you sort of think Cape Town Improvement District and the sort of cooperative agreements that exist between the private sector and the police in relation to crime prevention. So obviously in an ideal world, it would be best that, the, you know, that the police and that the private security Industry on doing doing the same thing, and that you know taxpayer money is not being wasted. The point is that they can complement each other, and that we can make a massive difference if there's partnership between the police who do their job and use our resources properly that they get from the taxpayer, and then the private sector using their resources as well. So I think this is a positive move. It's envisaged within the Integrated Crime and Violence Prevention Strategy, which talks about our whole of society approach and saying, look, the police can only do so much. But obviously, there are resources and expertise sitting in the private sector that can be drawn upon to augment it. Um, also, that a lot of expertise is sitting within um, the private sector. You know, ex-police left, SAPs joined the private sector. Also, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot more kind of entrepreneurial spirit and, you know, technological advancement that sits there that, you know, the police being in a massive bureaucracy often can't move as quickly. So there are lots of opportunities. I think it's also this is part of these arrangements that the police minister has been spearheading around getting deals done between national, provincial and city. We've seen that in the city of Cape Town where the agreement was recently signed. A sort of political agreement, they still need to get the, the kind of operational details in place. But I do think generally it's a positive move as long as it's not the private sector doing the work with the police that we're paying for. And of course, we don't know the detail of what the police minister thinks might happen in the future. But, yeah, there are, because they're, the police are not doing their job properly because many of their management philosophies and management people are not equipped and also they are not doing the job properly because they are simply overwhelmed. They're not properly resourced. There hasn't been proper training for a long time. So the reason as to why, and and of course the, um, the situation in South Africa, um, more and more people turning to crime, different kinds of crime, kidnapping, extortion, as those become nominally successful, it, it makes for a very complex crime picture, which again makes it very difficult for police to do what the taxpayers want them to do. Indeed, that's the case. I mean, the police are really sort of, you know, engaging with very complex, difficult problems on multiple fronts. And I think what a partnership with the private security sector can do is, you know, arrangements can make where the police can focus on areas, high crime areas, and then, you know, enter partnerships with private security to take over certain functions potentially on certain areas where the police have resources, but it's not necessarily a a constructive use of their resources, but they do need some sort of presence. But I certainly would see this more this collaboration around sharing of intelligence. It would be around coordinating different types of activities because, you know, private security are very active in certain neighborhoods, particularly middle class, wealthy neighborhoods, um, and, you know, often collect certain data and evidence. And you could sort of see potentially co-patrols happening. It already happens in the improvement district model. So those are, you know, potential opportunities that come out from there, but also, 
with the, the private sector so much further ahead when it comes to the use of new technology. So certainly they could be assisting the police in the use of that technology as well. What are the sort of things that you wouldn't want to see police trying to get the private security industry to do? I mean, it's, it's the, the bad bread and butter stuff. A lot of it is around obviously investigating crime, I and mean, that's a core police function. I think it's also really important that the police still do the bulk of the visible policing work because that is about demonstrating to the public that you're, you're present, that you're, you're there, you're building relationships because we want the police to be regarded as legitimate. If you're seeing police being replaced by private security, then that's, that's, you know, that's not necessarily, doesn't build police legitimacy. It actually demonstrates that the you know, police are relatively weak. So I think the kind of core basics of policing should not be usurped. But if you've got a situation where private security are being helpful, um, and particularly around, I think it would be helpful around the sort of docket management system that police have been really struggling with their dockets. It's a paper-based system, struggling in the move towards you know electronic efficient system. And I think really the private sector can come in there and help them. I think there's a lot of possibilities and focus should be around firearms and the management of firearms and the management of sort of the, the armories of the police control that they've been struggling with those kind of issues. So so hold, hold on a second, Guy, really. You get the private sector in to help the police look after their firearms. Well, around the management systems. Yeah. So in the sense of, you know, a lot of these firearms are maintained through manual registers, so, you know, handwritten registers. So, you know, at the drop of a hat, the police minister couldn't tell you if you asked him how many firearms are in the police's possession. He wouldn't know because that, that we don't have a central database about that. And so it's, you know, supposed to be happening, but it's been happening very slowly. So there are many things where we, we the private sector has solutions, which, you know, the government could certainly benefit from. Dr. Guy Lamb is a criminologist. Thank you, Guy, as always, for sharing your expertise with us.